You know it's getting serious if I've got my safety glasses on. Welcome back to the Skilled Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. It's episode eight of Road to the Rockies. Did we do the intro? <laughs> uh, yeah, things are happening. This is of course the Rocky Mountain Regionals sponsored by Team Garage Hack and uh, it's going to be happening in like two weeks from now, which is scary to say the least. At least it's two weeks until I have to be done. Uh, and um, there's a lot happening and nothing on class three. So all of you class three folks who really like class three, go watch another video because it's not happening in this one, unfortunately. I've been running nonstop. I've been running nonstop. The Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon has been running nonstop. I'm at my wits end. Things are, it's crazy. There's so many things happening, uh, but uh, I don't really have a lot of time to waste. So let's just get right into this episode. We're going to start with class two today. There you are, class two, and uh, lots of stuff has happened. Um, of course, last time you saw me, we were weathering the body. Now the body is attached to the chassis quite rigidly, I might add. Uh, we've also got the front bumper all done and the rear bumper's done now too. So um, yeah, lots of good stuff has happened. And now that the sort of the exterior stuff is sort of out of the way, uh, I've started to focus on some of the interior stuff. And of course I had already printed the cage uh, the last time we saw you. I made a slight revision to this. I just made it a tiny bit shorter overall um, uh, because there is a floor that this is all going to be attached to. And while it's not the final floor because I'm pulling it out of the garbage, uh, this is the start of the floor. And while it doesn't look like much there, of course there are some mounting points on the bottom there. That lines up perfectly with my slider design so I can screw in from the bottom uh, to keep everything nice and rigid. And uh, obviously this one, like I said, is sort of just sort of a prototype just for fitment, uh, but the cage will mount to this. And I've already started working on the next round of revisions on this floor. So there will be holes for all of these things so I can screw this cage into that. Uh, same thing for all of the seats. I'm stealing Josh's design. I've already printed out four of these uh, um, individual race seats and uh, they've all got sort of a mount point on the bottom there. Uh, they'll be screwed into this as well. And there's enough room for four of them. So I get two rows of seats, uh, which gives me a lot more scale points, which is exactly what I need because there isn't much else in terms of scale points. Uh, there's enough to get me right to 50 without having to um, maximize all of the scale accessories. I think I can get away with that. Um, there aren't a lot of points for the body itself. It gets hard body points, but it doesn't get custom points because it is 3D printed. It's not fabricated like class one is. Um, so I'm trying to kind of find ways that I can be creative in getting all the points I need without just gluing on a bunch of firewood. <laughs> Although you would only get one point, no matter how many you glued on. One thing I wanted to show you is another revision to the interior. Here's the new piece, which does include a firewall now and uh, an accelerator pedal and a clutch pedal. Uh, this will also, of course, mount to the interior as well. Um, there are already holes for that. Uh, so that'll work out really well. Uh, it uh, has a big hole in the front here because that's what uh, I decided on. The DSM mid uh, battery tray, and that's the carbon fiber tray that will fit right in there quite perfectly. I also did compensate for the motor and there will be a new cutout here in the floor and on the uh, dashboard as well. But otherwise it's all kind of coming together pretty nicely. I keep crossing things off the list. This is under its own power will drive and steer. It does all of those things. Uh, I decided to go with a quick run Fusion Pro. That's the two-in-one system from Hobby Wing, 2300 KV, 3S capable. Uh, it will require an external BEC to power both the high-powered reefs servo and servo winch. I don't want any brownouts. I don't want it losing power. I do not want it glitching in any way. So preventing all of that by adding a BEC, which I think is really important. Um, 
What else can I tell you? I revised the slider design slightly, so it's got a taller side panel uh, to which the body screws into quite rigidly. Uh, it's not an elegant design, and having those two screws there really bothers me in terms of the cleanliness of the look but I just kind of wanted to go for something simple and I didn't want to have to spend too much more time thinking about it. Um, it works and sometimes that's the best solution, uh, especially given the amount of time that I have left to finish these builds, which isn't much. Um, I do still really in my heart of hearts, I do want to travel with a class three of some sort. I know Josh built that Chopra and uh, while I do think that's an excellent solution, uh, I don't know that I have time to build one myself. So um, I've got an existing chassis with the Artful Dodgers chassis. All the element parts are already on there. It's basically set up and ready to go. It just kind of needs a body and some sort of interior, which I think I could knock out if I get C2 done to the point that I'm pleased with it. And it's it's getting there. It's it's coming along. And uh, I mean, I like the, 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 the... I really do like the look of it. I think it looks pretty rad. Um, just getting that interior finished will make me feel an awful lot better about the progress on this one. Uh, and um, as long as the bamboo X1 carbon keeps printing things as flawlessly as it has been, and I've had some long prints going now, uh, it's really spectacular uh, printer and I cannot recommend it enough. Uh, anyway, yes, we are close. We are a lot closer here. Oh, uh, inner fenders in the front. Uh, have been done. Not that it really needed them, but there are fenders in there now, so you cannot see all the way through, which is key to getting those inner fender points. Um, yeah, that's that's about the size of it for class two. It's, it's really come a long way, and we're so close to the finish line. Am I going to do windows? Yeah, I, I got to do windows. At least rears, uh, and then uh, a windshield. I think it's kind of mandatory, right? I know you don't need it for class two, but it just looks so unfinished without it. So why not add a little more weight? What else do we need to do? Um, that's it. It works. Everything works. Uh, there's a few like minor things like headlights. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, I actually designed up this quick little mount here. Uh, for a light bar and I'm gonna put that light bar behind the grill so it's gonna sit back in there So it'll have this cool blindingly bright light behind the grill. I think that'll look pretty neat tail lights uh, This truck doesn't really suit having um, Like a light bar or anything along the bottom. I think that would look kind of strange. So I'll probably just do like two pods uh, two rear facing pods on the back there and we'll call that tail lights. <laughs> okay, let's go on to class one because that is looking incredible. It's a freaking 911 Porsche, but like the off-road edition. <laughs> I am, uh, I'm genuinely awestruck by how great this is looking and how much progress there has been. It really is in the final stages of being worked on. There's not many more things to do. I mean, there's a ton of things to do. I don't know why I say it like that, but in the scheme of things, for the amount of work that's been put into it, there isn't much left. And that's really, really amazing. Uh, all of the metalwork is done. Uh, I used Steel It. <laughs> such an odd name for a product, but uh, it's a steel-based kind of paint uh, and provides a pretty nice coating and it looks really good. It suits the carbon fiber uh, mesh. It looks kind of like the gray part of the carbon fiber and I think it looks really good. So that's all done. Um, the interior, all of the pieces that Josh designed are printed and in there. It looks so rad. It looks just like you would imagine a Porsche should look like, at least an off-road one. Uh, you've got your two front bucket seats, you've got your two plus two seats in the back, uh, dashboard, steering wheel, center console for the transmission tunnel. It's all just there and it looks amazing. Inner fenders, front and rear. 
Uh, oh, the tail light keeps popping off because that's not glued in yet. Uh, we're gonna talk about that. Actually, let's talk about it right now. Tail light. Um, it's going to have a strip of COB LED lighting behind it, uh, which is going to light it up red. It's gonna look frigging awesome. Uh, and uh, it'll have the blacked out center section just like a regular Porsche would have. This is the latest iteration of the uh, wing or whale tail, if you if you will. Uh, this one has been designed to have tail light. This one's been designed to have louvers now. So instead of mesh, which we both agreed, Josh and I both agreed that you couldn't really see the motor very well with that mesh in place. The louvers make it a lot easier to see through and it just looks awesome. I am so chuffed with that. Uh, everything is mounted. It's all one solid piece now too, uh, which is really great. So since we've got the taillights figured out, might as well show you the headlights now too. Uh, Josh designed up the bezels and the actual headlight buckets. Uh, we're gonna have to drill in to the carbon fiber. These are just stuck on for now. But we're gonna drill into that carbon fiber there. Uh, and then we're gonna place um, the incision LED light kit, or at least the fronts. Let me grab those. We're sort of kind of hacking these a bit up, but uh, here's what it looks like out of the box. And it's a big, huge old light bucket. Uh, but we're kind of trimming it down to just the actual LED and the heat sink. We're gonna trim that down as well, but we're gonna drill a hole. So this basically, uh, this section here will go come through, we'll glue it in from behind with some of that metal JB weld probably, uh, as long as it's not conductive, which I don't think it is. Uh, and then the headlight will shine right through. Headlights, perfect. These are on 3S as well, so uh, we can all just wire them directly in line with the battery. Speaking of battery, uh, you're probably wondering, where in this tiny little thing would you put a battery? Well, Josh was smart enough to come up with a great solution for that. Uh, on the back here, uh, right here, that's where the battery's gonna go. It's gonna sit right down in there. And we can cover that up with this center section of seat. And then there's this nice vent cover here so you can see the rest of the motor up top. Uh, and uh, I still need to make one more trim on this body and that's to this piece here in order to allow this piece to actually fit in there properly. It's gonna be held in place with some rare earth magnets. Um, and uh, yeah, like a lot of parts of the interior, uh, once those things are in there, they're in there forever. Um, and yeah, it's just, I can't say enough nice things about Josh. He actually, did, not actually, he did a fantastic job on the design of this vehicle with the help of Brandon also at Vanquish. Uh, they've really knocked out something that is just so tremendously good looking. And it really kind of makes me sad to think that I'll be scraping it up against the rocks. I don't want to do it, but I'm going to because that's what we made these trucks for. Cars, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> uh, on the underside, tail light. On the underside, um, we've also got some nice smooth sliders to profile around the uh, metal sliders. So everything is nice and smooth and underneath there. Should be great for sliding over the rocks. Uh, that is mega impressive if you ask me. I, uh, I could stare at this truck all day. But there's one thing that is missing, and that is the livery. I've got it all planned out. I've got this. I've got all the masks cut. I did a little test with the clear paints. Uh, Tamiya XF clears work really well over carbon fiber. Let me find that piece because uh, it's worth sharing with you. Where is that? I've thrown out a lot of pieces in here. Revision number one, revision number 17, revision 38, revision 45, and so on and so forth. Where is that piece? That's not it. 
Where is it? There we go. Found it. So, <laughs> so here is the test with uh, the clear paints and a clear coat over top. Now it's kind of difficult to see in this light, um, but you can see quite clearly there's some blue and some red in there. Uh, and it does still show the weave through it really nicely. And uh, it really kind of comes to life in the sun. Uh, it's not so evident here, but I think it's going to look pretty spectacular. Uh, once we get the actual livery on here, there'll be a logo of some description here, a number plate here, uh, and I'm gonna try to do a nice swoopy stripe through the whole thing, uh, front to back and on the hood as well. Uh, so yeah, that's sort of the plan. And uh, I still haven't really looked at the list, but I know we need a windshield. Uh, Josh has already molded that, that's done. Josh needs to send me the bell crank system uh, sh and all the links for that. Uh, I need to install a servo winch, which I forgot to do. There's a couple carbon fiber plates that he needs to send me. Um, I have to wire the whole thing. <laughs> this is still not driven under its own power yet. So um, that's getting a little bit nerve wracking, but we're almost there. And I think you can agree that while it's been a very stressful time, uh, I cannot be more thrilled with what has been created here. And uh, Josh definitely uh, gets a lot of my props uh, because the fact that he was able to build one on his side of the country and I was able to build one on my side of the country in a different country uh, and have it turn out exactly the same as his is pretty spectacular. I owe him a very large debt of gratitude. All right, uh, I think that's gonna do it. I think we've covered everything. Um, I need to get back to work on these. So uh, if you have any questions, comments, anything you want to hear, if you've got any ideas or anything you wanna ask me about this amazing piece of art, uh, put a comment down below. You know I love reading through your feedback and I try to answer as many of them as I can. And if you're enjoying this video and you like videos where I wear safety goggles, hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. I think that's gonna do it. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again in two weeks, which is about the same time I'm getting ready to leave for this trip. Wish me luck. <laughs> see you on the next one.